the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola, very warm welcome to the VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have French super agent Bernard Collignan with us. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Bernard for coming on the show. Thank you so much and welcome to your show. And I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period? I'm fine. During the pandemic, I rest. I've been resting a lot. Because I used to travel a lot and the two months pandemic allowed me to rest my body and to stay with my family. So, you know, like uh, everyone wants to be a footballer or a manager. Did you always want to become an agent? No, 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 no. Uh, first, I, I was I was good in school and I was good in football also. And I played football uh, until a certain level that I have um, uh, a knee injury, uh, which prevent me from uh, playing uh, football. And so uh, I met also uh, agents who were not right, you know. I think the way they were dealing with me was not right. And I decided that at the end of this, I'm going to get my license at the French Federation to become an agent, which is what I what I did. So you know, like I'll talk about one topic. Okay, you were involved in a mega transfer of uh, John Philip Jibamin from Mainz to Everton for around 25 million euros, and I have personally seen and heard about transfers a lot. But you know, like, can you see us what happens in a transfer? Like, what all goes behind the scene? Who is behind the scenes? A transfer um, involves uh, three parts. Uh, the both both clubs, the club uh, which uh, with whom the uh, whom the player is in his contract, and the clubs uh, which wants the player, and the third part is the player's part. So the club where the players plays acts a certain amount of money which is for this case is 25 million euros and the other club they see if they can pay it or not and if they agree the player also has to agree to join that club you know as soon as all the parties are in the same lane then the transfer the transfer happens you know so you're but like, it's oh. not it's not it's not sorry it's not easy because it's lots of negotiations and uh, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know. So how long does one, like, suppose we only see the end product, but how long does it take, like, for a transfer behind the scene? Oh, it can go very quickly. You know, it can take days, it can take weeks, it can take months. But as soon as everyone is on the same lens, it can take 36 hours, 36, 48 hours, you know. Uh, the Both players agree. Uh, the player, so me, the agent of the player, I agree with the, the club regarding the next contract of, of the player. As soon as all this, all the parties agreed, you know, then uh, the, the, the club where the player plays, so the club where the player wants to go send, a, send the, the, the money or a guarantee that the, 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 the money is going to be paid, you know, and then the player has the green light to go to the club for, for medical test and as soon as he has completed the medical test then he signs his contract you know and then all things are official both clubs they make things official at the same time it's all over in the media you know so you know like this uh, pandemic has created a huge havoc how how much will it affect the transfer windows that is coming up what's your question please the pandemic that is going on right yeah. now, it has created a lot of problem. How much will it affect the transfers? Yeah, because I think uh, we will not have very expensive transfers, you know, because uh, all the clubs, they have cut their budgets, you know, and also the companies uh, which are financing the clubs, 
uh, they will less finance the club or they will not fa finance the club at all. And also you have lots of players who are going to find themselves without teams, especially free players. Players who are not uh, who are free at the end of the season, they might not find a team for next season, maybe because they are too expensive, maybe because uh, they are not good enough, and, and maybe a lot of things can happen. You know, when you have a pandemic like this, uh, the rich become richer and the poor get poorer or they just disappear, which is a shame, you know. So, you know, you have been involved in taking a lot of players from Africa and bringing them to Europe. Like, why did you, like, uh, is there any reason particularly you choose uh, to go to Africa a lot? Not only Africa, you know, I bought a, an Asian player, uh, a South Korean kid in, in, in Arsenal many years ago. And uh, finally, he said he wanted to join Chelsea, you know. And uh, anyway, he went back to, to South Africa. I mean, I scored everywhere in the world, you know. I can come to Nepal now. If, if the player is good, I'm going to call a club. They send me the invitation for the player and, uh, and, uh, and uh, he can sign in the club. He might go for a trial or something like this. So, but also I believe in the African player, you know, because the African player is strong. And I think that what, what needs to Africa, it's a, it's a lack of structures, you know. The players in Africa are not scouted at the right time. That's why also they sometimes they bring their age down, you know, and also the the the, the, um, the people, the coaches there who are coaching the kids, uh, they are not sometimes they don't have the good trainees, you know, so they are not qualified enough to, to train the kids sometimes. So, yes. So you know, like as an agent, what is the most important thing for you when selecting a club for your player? Uh, <clears throat> the first question I, 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 I make uh, before bring, bringing um, a club to a player, uh, I have two questions. The first question is that, is that player is going to fit to the mentality of the club? You know, this is the first question. And the second question is that, is that player good enough to play in the first team of that team, you know? Because sometimes agents, they bring you as a player in such a big team while you still have next steps, you know, to go through to play in that first team and it's, it's, it's the wrong choice for you. When you bring a player to a team, you have to think, does this player will play in the first team? Because when the player plays in the first team, he is in a kind of window, you know? He plays and, and if he makes well and then uh, he then he's in a window as me, so he's been seen, and then all the clubs are, are attracted uh, to him. You know. So you know, like, uh, do we, like do you have an agency or do you work alone? I have an agency. Agency. So you have, have scouts all over the world. Yeah, I have people scouting for me, and also I do it myself. You know. Yeah. So, suppose a player wants to come to you, like do they come to you or you approach them to join your agency? Many players come to me, but it's difficult because I don't work with a player I have not seen with my eyes, you know. I have to see the player live, playing live in a competition, in an official game. And if I think he's good, then I'm going to contact the club for him. But if I don't see a player, it's difficult for me. I can see videos, but videos are just highlights, uh, which uh, they cut the videos. You know, they, they make they show you only the the good parts of the player, but it does not show his defaults. We all have qualities and and and, and defaults. You know, so it's difficult. That's why I have to make sure that I see the player live. If not. I don't do anything, which makes things difficult because you cannot be everywhere at the same time, you know. Yeah. So why don't you come to Nepal? We have good talent here. I will come. You have to invite me. 
you are invited you are already invited you can come any time like it's not a problem yeah how many teams you have in nepal first division we have around 10 10 teams so huh? how is the level level is fine it's not very good but uh, we have few talents who are playing abroad in indonesia and india and there are many others who are not getting chance to go out can you give me the name of a player who plays for instance in in india so we have uh, kiran kemjong hold on hold on i'm going to check it hold on Whatever. Give me one second. I'm gonna check it now. In which team he plays in India? Punjab FC. Okay. This is a. Uh... ISL or I League? I League. Oh, Punjab. Yeah, they are turn. Okay, I see. We What's his position? Goalkeeper. Ah, oh, he's a goalkeeper. Okay. Yeah, I saw him. He's 30 years old. Yeah. He was playing first in Tristar. Tristar is in Nepal, huh? Yes. And after Tristar, he went to Manau, Marshindi. And then he went to TC Sports. What, in which country is TC Sports? It's in Maldives. Oh, Maldives. Okay. And he plays for the national team also. Qualification yes. of the World Cup. Okay. okay. Nice. And in Indonesia, who do you have? We have Rohit Chand. Let me check it. Indonesia. Which team? Persija, Jakarta. Which team you said? Persija, Jakarta. Okay, I saw the team. Yeah, he's a midfield. Yes. 28 years old, yeah. He played in Mashindra, then he went to India in Hal SC, then in, Indo in Indonesia, PS, 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 Pekambaru, then he went to Malaysia, T team, then he went back. To Nepal to Manong Marchanding, then now he's in. oh for this is his fourth year in Indonesia. Huh? Yes. Okay. He won the Plays best year in 2018 in Indonesia. Oh. oh wow. Wow wow wow. That's good. That's good. You see I have a... let me show you. I have a you see a software in which I check all the details, you know, of a player, you know? Okay. Rory Chan, I have his birthday, place, all his teams, all his CV, you know, you see? All this yeah. with all the statistics, you know? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So similarly, we have a lot of players in Nepal who are not getting a chance to go out, you know, like, so if with your help, you know, like they can achieve more good players and your contacts also will improve. Yeah, of course. That's why I have to come to Nepal. Definitely. Yeah. So in Nepal, what's your classification in FIFA ranking? I think we come in the uh, later half of uh, in hundreds, hundred and fifty something. But oh. I think we are not qualified to uh, play for the uh, in the higher leagues. As of now, I think we are in hundred seventeen, hundred seventy. Sorry, one seven zero. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Perfect. And how many foreign players do you allow in your in your championship uh, team? In the uh, national league? Yeah. 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 I think it's four. Four foreign players. Yeah. And what are the wages like? For instance, how much a foreign player make a year in Nepal? So that I'm not particularly sure, but I can connect you to one person who can help you further with that. Okay. 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 So I'll move on to the next question, Bernard. So suppose tomorrow I want to be an agent. Okay. So how do I start? What are the certifications do I have to do? In France, uh, in France is the most difficult countries to get the license, you know, because in 2015, FIFA canceled the system of, of giving the license. But in France, we kept it, you know. In France, it's difficult. For instance, me, to get the license, we did an exam, uh, which we have a law in France. All the law, you need to get 10 out of 20. So when you had 10 after 20, you say, okay, it's easy. But the problem is not easy because law in France is, is very, 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 uh, very, uh, you have lots of, of things to, to learn, you know. So sometimes you can go to the exam and they ask you something you have not studied, you know. And then after you, you success in the law part, Now you have to, to, to get another part which is specific. You need 14 out of 20, you know? And 14 out of 20 is already an excellent note to have, you know? So we have a statute and regulation of French, uh, French Federation and FIFA. And after this, for instance, me, I got my license in 2010. We were 600 and only 15. 15 uh, got the license that year, you know, and I was number fifth out of 15. 15 people out of 600 people got the license that year. So it's it's very difficult here in France. I know in other countries, you just you just pay a fee to register the federation, and they call them intermediaries. In France, we don't have intermediaries. We have French license agents, license from the French federation. You know? So, you know, like as an agent, you would have to know many languages. How many languages do you speak? I speak six languages. Oh. Which all? French is my modern language. I speak English, Italian, German, Portuguese, Spanish. Okay, that's a lot. So, on that note, Bonad, I'll ask you one final question. Mm -hmm. This is very controversial. Whom do you prefer, Messi or Ronaldo? I don't prefer anyone uh, because I don't like comparing players, you know. I just think that they have brought football in such a level. We never saw this before and it's going to be difficult to see this after them because these both players, if you just check the statistics, you know, they are at a level where it's just unbelievable. And the funny thing is that you never see them Uh, with injuries, you know, it means that they are very, very, uh, play, they are players uh, who make, uh, they are very careful in, in their uh, health style or, you know, and also it's, they are lucky also, you know, because sometimes injury comes with bad luck, you know, so, so yes, but I think you cannot compare them like, I don't like comparing Maradona and, and Pelé, you know, like you cannot compare, for instance, Zidane or Platini because each these players, they have been playing in different periods, you know, and Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo and Messi now, you cannot really compare them. To compare something, this something needs to have similarity, you know, Ronaldo has a, a different game than Messi. So how, how are you going to compare them, you know? But for me, the, the, way, the way they brought the football is it's, it's another level, you know, because these guys are animals, you know. So on that note, Bernard, thank you so much for talking to me and I wish you all the best for your future deals.
and hope we thank can you. talk again soon and i hope you come to nepal soon because we thank have you so much thank you so much thank for coming thank you lala have a nice day thank you bye bye bye